Welcome everybody to AT&T Cable Services and Family Ties Production Mac 2000 Game of the Week on Channel 73. Davenport West Falcons hosting the North Wildcats here at Brady Street Stadium tonight on a beautiful football night. I'm Cy Robinson along with Jeff Manders and cameraman Jess Medina and we're going to bring you this game a little bit later on. What do you think about this one Jeff? Well we got the annual uh, city rivalry between uh, West High School Davenport and Crosstown rival North and uh, we're looking at two teams tonight that have struggled a little bit in the MAC this year. Uh, mm -hmm. West coming in a record uh, of two and six and North still in quest of that first win uh, coming in at 0 and 8. Yeah, I'm sure that. Or 0 and uh, 7, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, 0 and 7. I, I'm sure that uh, the North Wildcats figure tonight might be a, a good night to get a win for first year coach Mark Bloom. And uh, they've worked hard, their staff has worked hard, and uh, just haven't gotten the few breaks that they needed, although they have the number one running back in the conference. And that's a side story in itself. Uh, uh, Marcus Simmons kind of. On, pa on pace to uh, surpass Tavian Banks' mm -hmm. uh, all-MAC uh, rushing record. Needs to average 173 yards per game for these last two games. And uh, from what we've seen of Marcus uh, over the course of this season, he could well well threaten that. Uh, indeed. And uh, we've, we've said it before and we'll say it again. A tremendous young man and uh, has just done a fine job in, in trying to hold a team together that hasn't won, and, and he's done a nice job with that, too. And yeah. I'm, I'm proud to say that I teach at the high school where uh, he's a student. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's senior night tonight for the West High Falcons. Yes. We uh, had opportunity to see the uh, the various teams, the cross-country team, the golf team, and mm -hmm. so forth. They paraded uh, their uh, their parents and seniors out in front before uh, before the game. And right now we're waiting for the uh, Falcons to come out of the locker room. Yeah, uh, uh, they've got to rip their thing through their thing over there once we get rolling here. And... Uh, Looks like the Wildcats are on the field ready to go. Well, we have two contrasts in, in coaching experience here. We have uh, Coach uh, Paul Flynn in his 11th year with the West High Falcons. Most of his staff have uh, been with them all through that duration. Mm -hmm. And on the North High side, we have uh, Coach Mark Bloom in his first year of uh, being head coach at North High School. Mm -hmm. Uh, after serving as uh, several years as an assistant uh, at both the sophomore and varsity level. All right. And here comes the Falcons. All right. So we'll be teeing it up here in just a second. As soon as the Falcons get out here in mass. And as I said before, just a great night for football. Sitting here in short sleeves on the 20th of October. I love it. Well, well, from what we can tell, North High uh, is going to kick off to West. Uh, we didn't see if they, had the, uh, West deferred or actually North won the uh, won the toss, but uh, doing the kicking for North High is going to be Travis Veith, a six foot, uh, 170 pound senior. And we don't know who's deep yet for the for the red shirts, but <laughs> well, we're going to have a little reenactment here, I think, Coach. Uh, the captains are going out on the field again. Uh, Luke Fleming, Zach Sheedy, Keith Huby, and Dan McCready from the Wildcats, and as well as the West co-captains, uh, Mike Owens, number 68, and Kyle Jager, I believe, number 83. Yeah. So the referee has indicated that West will receive, and the players will shake hands, and we'll be underway. Yeah. This game getting a little late started uh, Truly tonight. Uh, sophomore con conquest uh, seemed to take a long time to get over. And mm -hmm. then with the senior night activities and so forth, uh, you know, starting around 8.36. 20 my, 25 minutes a night is past my bedtime almost. <laughs> Pretty close anyway. Maybe not, but anyhow, here we go. Back deep for the Falcons, receiving deep in the middle, number 34, Ivis McNeil to the near side, Corey Mack, number nine, and on the far side, number four, Rob Robinson, three speed burners for the, for the Falcons. As you alluded to, Travis Veith will be doing the kicking with uh, Marcus Simmons, number 33, the safety man. And we're off to the races. Beast kick high and deep to. Anyhow, it was uh, two over the head of Ivis McNeil, I should say, into the end zone. So a nice kick by Beast, and the Wildcats will take over. Excuse me, the Falcons will take over first and ten at their own twenty. The 
Falcon lineman, uh, number 68, Mike Owens. 78, Mike Dale, big Mike Dale, 6'6", 270. Definite size advantage for the red shirts coach in this game. And the Falcons will start out with a little bootleg pattern wide open to the near side and Arguello decides to run the ball and gets a block from his receiver. So well, they could have gone either direction with that, ran or or passed. Yeah, a little boot pattern there with a uh, flood action uh, to this side of the field. Uh, mm -hmm. Arguello actually had uh, some receivers over there, Kyle Jagger uh, open in the, uh, the near flats, and he also had uh, Ryan Smith deep. So mm -hmm. uh, he chose to pull it down and uh, picked up a good gain. So a first and 10 at the Falcon 33 wing formation. Here's the give to Mack over the left side and Mack pretty near first down again. And the referee signals first down. Luke Thiessen, the center for the Falcons. Here's the give to Mack again, and a pretty good defensive play by number 44, it looked like, Coach uh, Josh Campbell for the Wildcats. Well, Campbell had penetrated into the, the backfield there uh, and had a good shot at Mack. Mack mm -hmm. kind of gave him a stiff arm and uh, slipped a tackle and ended up uh, picking up about four on the carry. So Mack did a good job uh, not only to get back to the line of scrimmage, but also to pick up a good gain. Second and six for the Falcons. Wing to the wide side of the field. Here's the give and the bootleg again. Same play we saw a while ago. And avoiding one tackler, Luke Fleming was there, didn't make the play, but uh, Sarguello advances to uh, the Wildcat 42 yard line first down again. Well North High uh, historically this season had a little has had a little trouble playing defense this year. Uh, Knights they've got the offense going they've mm -hmm. given up a lot of points and that um, one of the reasons why they're having difficulty winning football games but uh, they're going to have to do a better job tackling than uh, what we see in this first series if they expect to win. Exactly right. And a little Inside counter, a little quick counter play. Ball given to Jeff Weiss, the fullback this time. And picked up a couple yards. Bringing into play for the uh, Falcons is Rob Robinson. Falcons still in the tight wing formation out of the eye. And the give to Mack and good defense there shown by the Wildcats. Third and six at the Cats 38 yard line we'll call it. Falcons took the opening kickoff uh, which was into the end zone and from their own 20 have moved the ball on the ground to this point. And as we speak, wide open and incomplete pass intended for number 34, Ivis McNeil. And uh, well, it looks like Arguello just kind of misfired there. He had a yeah. little pressure, but yeah. uh, once again, uh, he's doing a good job getting outside containment and getting outside the pressure. And that time, uh, mm -hmm. it just kind of misfired to uh, McNeil, and McNeil could not hold on. So. And again, as a lot of quarterbacks do, I think he waited just a little bit too long to, to deliver the ball. And, and I think you see that from uh, high school quarterbacks a lot. Now, Falcons with double flankers. Here's the draw play to our Aguello, or excuse me, to Mack, and he's gone. And down in the corner of the goal line, he's down on about the six inch line, it looks like, on the far cut side. Corey Mack carries the ball. Well, the, the draw play uh, coming up with a big play with Corey Mack. Yeah. I tell you, the West Eye uh, 
fans and staff thought he was in the end zone, but uh, yep. the referees did not see that. But uh, I tell you, uh, can't give up big plays like that if you're the North High no. defensive coordinator. Uh, Good play call by the by the West offensive people. Uh, they split people out and ran the draw play. Looked like a passing formation. Now we got whistles and bells and flags and all kinds of stuff here on the first and goal. And the first indication is against the Falcons. A illegal procedure, I think it was. Yes, indeed. So it'll be first and goal from about the five, a little past the five yard line. Come on, so a little breather, little breather for the cat. Arguello gives to Mac and he'll score over the left side and that looked pretty easy that play. Yeah, West High not doing anything fancy, just kind of playing smash yeah. mouth football. Yeah. That time uh, running the inside lead play, uh, and Mac just followed his blocker and got good line surge from his offensive line and uh, they put it in the end zone. Exactly right. So 6-0 Falcons with 8.31 on the clock and for the extra point now, uh, Jake Anderson, number 71, holding will be Arguello. And kick is good. 7-0 Falcons. Extra point by Jake Anderson is good. Here with 8.31 to go in the first quarter. The score is Davenport West, 7 Seven nothing Falcons as they kick off to the Wildcats. A short kick at the 30, taken by uh, Ryan Goss, and that's not exactly the person that the Wildcats would like to return the football. Well, I'm sure uh, the oh. West High kicker uh, planned it that <laughs> yeah. way. They're not going to kick deep to Simmons. Yeah. They don't want to, to give that young man a chance that's, to, that's to return. football. Wildcats will take over now with the clock running at 8.24. With a single set running back, Marcus Simmons. And the give over the right side, Simmons has got room and he plows his way up to the 43 yard line. First down, Wildcats. And there's an example of what Simmons can do. He's got the speed to turn the corner and then he's got the power to get the extra three by bowling over a couple defensive backs. Well, the longer, uh you know, North High can keep their uh, defense off the field, the better. But uh, with a running back like Simmons, he might only be out there for two or three plays before yeah. he pops one. Yeah, that's true. Simmons, right side, and pretty well defense that time. He'll gain a couple. He tends to make people miss. Even that time, uh, there was two West defenders out there, Coach, and uh, and they never got a clean shot at him. Yeah. They, they managed yeah. to push him out of bounds, but they, they never got a clean shot at him. Yep. Well, Keith Huby, number four, is the quarterback here for the Wildcats. Mike Powell, number 60, the center on the exchange. Simmons, right side. Avoids one tacker, avoids another tackler, and Takes it down to about the 37 yard line of the Falcons. First down, Wildcats. As we set some of the linemen for the Wildcats. Carries the ball for 14 yards before being tackled by Robert Gilbert of West. First down. Well, he's getting some nice blocking that time from his the right side of the line that uh -huh. time. Uh, some red shirts being pushed back a little bit on that last one. High formation now for the Wildcats. Hubie to throw the quick in. And uh, 
just a little bit high toward Ryan Smith, who was wide open coming to the inside. Smith is a sophomore wide receiver. Well, they caught West High in a blitz situation that time. I tell you, mm -hmm. it was a nice play. Uh, it was a perfect play for for the situation. Unfortunately, uh, Hubie, Hubie just a little high on the yep. throw. Perfect play, but you got to execute it. And a little referee's time out here. Second and ten for the Cats. Brett Goss, number 51, the left guard's a sophomore. They have a sophomore left side of their line with Osterberg at the left tackle. And just a quick give there to Kenan Christian, I believe, was it not? Yeah, it was Kenan. And yeah, uh, uh, Kenan, the fullback, and another sophomore coach. So yeah, there's Kenan's a, another sophomore. Three or four sophomores playing at the varsity level for the Wildcats tonight. Well, that time Chris Johnson, uh, one of the nose tackles for uh, for West, I got a hand on uh, mm -hmm. on on mm -hmm. on Kenyon and uh, made a nice tackle. Still picked up about three on the play. Third and seven. As Hubie starts sheeting in motion, and we got a flag. And they're going to give a delay of game penalty to the Wildcats. So it'll be third and 12 now. Five yard penalty for me third down. Well, when you start running uh, people in motion, coach, yeah, uh, you it takes longer. Yeah, you got to get, get the play in and out and sooner. Uh, that's the used to hate that penalty more than anything when back in our coaching days. Single, single set back for the Wildcats with two flankers. QB on the boot, wide open up here. Delivers it, and a nice defensive play by Brian Nagel of the Falcons to break that play up because I thought Cheedy was open down yeah, there. Yeah, Cheedy was open. I tell you, we talked earlier about uh, you know quarterback holding the ball a little too long. Uh, Sheedy was open early, and by the time uh, Hubie got him the ball, it gave time for the defensive uh -huh. back to come over and knock it mm -hmm. down. But uh, he had a man underneath open also. Yeah, he but, did. Uh, yeah, uh, Goss was open underneath. Brian Nagel, a great defensive play, just reached in there at the last second and batted it down. So fourth and 12, Wildcats will go for it. But not before they call a timeout and to talk things over. So... Coach Bloom will go out and visit his huddle and see what's going on out there. And we'll take a break. Uh, something's up here because oh, we're ready to go. Okay, I formation, Hubie, fourth and 12. Here's the give to Simmons, and Simmons brought down by number nine for the Falcons on a nice shoestring tackle there it was Corey Mack making the play and well they tried to uh, kind of take a little playbook out of the West High uh, playbook running the yeah. draw that time unfortunately yep. it wasn't successful like uh, it was for West High and uh, well there's a there's a time where uh, just a one hand on a foot makes a tackle otherwise it, it's there at any rate first down Falcons on their own 40. Seven to nothing, Falcons. Here's the give to Weiss or the right side. He'll pick up five. Yeah! So second and five for the Falcons. We think we're looking at a holding here, Coach, according to our producer. Oh, is there Justin a flag Dana. there? Oh, yeah, okay. there is a flag. The flag's yeah, flag's on the other side of the pile there. I couldn't see oh. it, so. The West Falcons will be whistled for a 10-yard penalty and holding. So it'll be first and about 16. That, that penalty is from the point of the infraction. Holding on West, 10-yard penalty, repeat, repeat first down. Luke Thiessen. Snaps the ball, and here's Mack over the right side, and he kind of 
wiggles his way forward, coach, and gets clear uh, back up to the 44-yard uh, line. So a good pickup, about a 10-yard pickup there by Mac. Max got great feet. When he's healthy, he can he can run. To yeah, he started the season he off. Well. He was kind of banged up yeah. a little bit, yep. and uh, he was kind of playing kind of sparingly. Uh, but uh, he's been healthy the last few games, and he's he's really excelled. Double tight ends for the Falcons. Here's Mac over the middle, inside trap. Up to the 50-yard line, and that's going to be very close to a first down. And it looks like the referee re ruled the ball to the 50, so it's going to be a first. Well, Campbell had a shot at him again. Once again, he was uh, blitzing through uh, the middle. Uh -huh. And I uh, had some deep penetration, but he's having trouble wrapping, wrapping up. And uh, Max doing a good job slipping tackles. Yes, he is. Well, we have a man down on the field for the Wildcats, so we'll take a break. Ryan Smith, a little shaken up on the play. A wind knocked out. He's fine. We're glad to see that. So first and 10 for West at midfield. Arguello under center. Rolls to pass and has a receiver and a nice catch out there by Robinson. And he's Work. gonna go all the way because a defender fell down. I think it's coming back though, coach. Oh. I think we see a clip well, out we got there. A, we got a flag at about the 20 yard line, which is probably gonna be a clip against West. And that was a nice play by Rob Robinson there. Yeah, nice nice play by Arguela too. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a defender in his face and uh, he just uh, stopped short, threw a strike. Uh, Robinson uh, bobbled a little bit, but made the grab and and, and slipped the defender and, and went in for the score. But unfortunately, uh, there was a clip for uh, for West High, mm -hmm. so it's going to come back. Uh, hate to see those good plays come back like yep. that. Well, it'll still be a 21-yard gain from the because the the spot of the foul was cleared down by the 20-yard line and a 15-yard penalty, so they'll get the yardage gain. But the I know the Falcons would rather have the touchdown, but. <laughs> It's not going to be on a beautiful play and a nice catch. At any rate, first and ten, Arguello. Fumble. Gives to uh, Ivis McNeil. McNeil fumbled, coughed up the football, but uh, the whistle had blown I, it dead. Yeah, I think they're going to rule that he was down, although that was questionable. In yeah, it was. Also. He looked like he might have been rolling across a player. Uh, North High fans do not like that at all. <laughs> the blue lips are out on the North High side of the field. So second and eight. Ivis McNeil carried that for two yards. Mack, left side on a sweep. Got some room and he'll be shoved out of bounds by Terrence Callahan at about the, uh, excuse me, the 16 yard line. First down Falcons and coach the Falcon running game is is uh, showing us stuff right now. Well, the containment for uh, North right now is not very good. Nope. Uh, I tell you, between the boots that Arguello is getting outside and all that time, the, the toss, toss sweep. Uh, the containment by the corners and defensive end and, and exterior people for North High is not very good at this point. Yep. Now we got a little counter and a uh, fine job by Ryan Anderson of sniffing out the counter. So a very nice job uh, by Ryan Anderson there. Uh, that was Ryan Anderson for a loss of seven yards. That was McNeil, I believe, carrying the ball for West. So we got uh, second and about 17. And we got, what, four downs to make a, you know, a first down on yeah. in this case. Yep. So. Campbell in the backfield didn't make the tackle, but slowed uh, Mack down enough where the rest of the gold shirts could get there. So pretty good defense right there. Third and about 15. Corey Mack struggles for two yards. Third and 15. Into the game for 
North, number 55, Jake Swain, another sophomore. Brent Klinkenberg, number 75 on the defensive line. And a little run action play and a nice hit. Nice hit there by Terrence Callahan to force uh, the receiver to drop the football. Well, it came up and really drilled Simmons on that uh, quick little seam pass they right. tried to hit. And uh, Ryan the, the Sims uh, looked like he had himself a catch, and Callahan just drilled him. Well, the you know the it kind of, the the ball was high, and then yeah, kind just of a little about. slow to yeah. be delivered, and yeah. uh, it kind of hung that receiver yeah, out to dry. Not the kind of ball as a receiver you want to see coming, but all right, we're gonna have a Jake field goal Anderson attempt on a field goal about attempt. forty yards, but it's a fake. And how about a fake field goal attempt? Campbell just misses the oh and throws the ball and Corey Mack throws the ball to Corey Mack. Mack fumbles, red shirt picks it up and scores. That's Holy Robert Mack. Gilbert on the recovered fumble and touchdown. I tell you, Mack did just a good job to come back for the ball and yes, make the he catch. Did. He really made the play. Uh, there was some pressure there, and it was a good job by uh the holder, Arguello, to, uh, to get the ball off. But I tell you, Mack came back and made a really nice catch. Oh, that was a, that was a nice play by Corey Mack. And, and Gilbert was the right man at the yeah. right place at the right time. Yes, he was. Well, unfortunate set of events there for the Wildcats. And a high snap to Arguello on the extra point try. And Arguello has got a lot of linemen downfield. So, but he threw it anyway, it was incomplete. So yeah. it'll be 13 to nothing here with 2.50 to go in a first quarter. And we've seen a lot of action this quarter, Coach. Man. Well, a little, little crazy Bad. plays, uh, similar type plays, although I think the second uh, uh, was due to the high snap. Yep. But uh, Zach yep. Sheedy on the coverage that time. Uh, Arguello once again trying to hit Mack in the corner. Sheedy did a good job knocking it down. Yes, he did. We'll take a break. 13 and nothing, 250 left in the first quarter here at Brady Street Stadium as Jake Anderson tees it up and kicks it deep to the Wildcats and out of bounds and the Wildcats will take over on their own 40 if they so desire. I think that Well, let's recheck the rule on that. The rule used to be uh, first down on the 40 if the well the Wildcats have the choice of a re-kick it appears and will take the five yard penalty illegal procedure penalty and a little breeze has come up from the, uh, the south end of the field so Anderson will kick off in the into the wind here. And the squib is picked up by Todd Lawler. No, I'm sorry, Tim, Tim Robinson, Robinson. Picked yeah. up by Tim Robinson. And so. The net result is about a one and a half yard loss, coach. First down, Wildcats on their own 38 and a half yard line. Farley on the tackle, Seth Farley for the Falcons. Hubie. Gives to Simmons right side and Simmons will pick up a couple of yards. Tough going on that right yeah. side at this point. Setting some def defensive people for the Falcons. Uh, number 22, Seth Farley calling the defensive signals. Number 82, a defensive end, Robert Gilbert. 63, Chris Johnson. 56, Tom Peppers. Simmons, right side, and he is grabbed immediately 
by number 64, Mark Cole. Well, West is starting to bring some people. They have eight yeah. men in the box, Coach. Yep. And I tell you, the linebacker was shooting on that side. Simmons that time just ran right into it. Uh, they're, they're more or less daring uh, North Eye to put the ball in the yeah, air. Yeah, they are. And at this point, when you got a 13-point lead, I think that's yeah. the thing to do. Yeah. Well, this is definitely a passing situation with about a third and eight to go. Uh -huh. And uh, we're going to have to see what uh, Wildcats can do in this situation. Wildcats showing blitz again, which they do. And Mack blitzes, puts the pressure on Hubie. And we're going to have an interference call here, referee Coach. About most likely. that flag in the ground there. <laughs> Pass intended for Tim Robinson. And... Falcons will be whistled for a for, uh, pass interference, which will be an automatic first down. Well, the Wildcats did a little break there, and they just got it from uh, yeah. the referee. Uh, yeah. uh, there was some contact out there. Um, it looked like a pretty good job of coverage. I think that this time the defensive back just uh, just was there too early. Yeah, just got a little hasty, didn't he? Oh. But, yeah, he was Because it was a good coverage. I think that was, what, Nagel on the coverage over there? Was it? I couldn't tell yeah, who Or was. Larson, I believe. Yep. Larson on the coverage, but uh, did not do a bad job at all. Pass interference on West. So 15-yard penalty. First down north. Assessed to West, and uh, Wildcats will take over on the West 46-yard line, first and 10. 13-0, 124 to go in the first quarter. Hubie, jump pass. And a fumble. And a ball was caught, but was it fumbled? Referee indicates fumble. And it's ruled a fumble, and the Falcons recover, and they'll take over first down on their own 37-yard line. And I don't know about that one, Coach. Well, that, that was kind of questionable, Coach. Uh, I don't know Tim Robinson running that. Yeah, running the little seam. I, I didn't think the ground caused it. It was more of a question as to whether did he ha did he make the catch, did he have possession yeah. of it. Yeah, did he have possession? Um, but, but Tim the Robinson, was, uh, or the official was right on the spot there. Sure. And here's Nick. Mack. Got some room. And up to about the 48-yard line, first down, Falcons. So Max, the worst ho uh, workhorse here for the Falcons tonight so far. And he's looked good. Uh, yep. Getting good support from his offensive line. I tell you, they are right now are dominating the, uh, yeah. the line of scrimmage. And that's uh, one of I the big it. reasons for Max's success. Oh, he's done a good job uh, slipping tackles. West High pretty much doing what they want offensively at this point. Yep. Weiss, left side. Still going. It's still up. Oop. He's not anymore. Second and eight. We'll call second and eight. Well, Wildcats moving the ball. Had a nice play and come up with a, instead of the big play, they come up with a big mistake. So, well, the Falcons, yeah, the Falcons are going to play eight man in the box and they're going to, they're going to come with people. And uh, if they're going to get beat, they're going to make sure Simmons doesn't beat them. Uh, well, Hubie on the jump, uh, jump pass used very effectively. We'll probably see that again. Here's a pitch now to Ivis McNeil, a little room to the left side, finally brought down by Marcus Simmons on the far side at about the 38-yard line of the Wildcats. Well, the containment, you know, got to improve. Once again, we had no corner support on that time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, the Falcons are getting to the corner right away, and yep. they're not getting any kind of uh, containment on that side. Well, so. they're getting, yeah, they're getting outrun to the sideline. They're line getting outrun too. to the sideline. First down on the 40. Here's Arguello. Inside trap, and a nice, nice hit there, Coach by uh, Kenan Christian, the sophomore linebacker. Back for no game. Very nice job by Christian. And uh, first quarter has ended with the Davenport West Falcons leading 13 to nothing over the Davenport North Wildcats. And we'll be back for the second quarter.
Well, we're back for second quarter action just as the Falcons take it for second and 10 going the opposite direction and the ball's whistled dead. Most likely a procedure penalty, which it is second and 15 now. AT&T Cable Services and Family Ties Production. Bringing you the tonight's game. Eighth week of the season, coach. One more game, one more week, and this we're into the playoffs. Unbelievable. And I tell you, the weather we've had uh, so far this season oh. just outstanding, coach. Beautiful. Ivis McNeil around the right side and <laughs> and drug a tackler about three yards there, coach. A nice effort by Ivis. Will bring up third and about six. Carries the ball for yeah. three yards. Third down. Nine yard gain on the play. Well, coach, I think North has to start bringing some people. I mean, they're kind of just getting pounded in their, uh, mm -hmm. their split four, their split six defense here. Yeah. And uh, they got to start manning up and just coming with people because uh, defensive line's not doing it. Here's the boot again. No receiver over to this side. So somebody has messed up a pattern. Arguello decides to run it back the opposite way. And Marcus Simmons lays a good hit on the uh, good bounce hit on. Line. Uh, Arguello over on the right far side. Arguello doing a good job scrambling, eluding uh, tacklers. Yeah. Well, there had close. to be a receiver miss a pattern there because there was yeah. no receiver out. That's going to be down. close to first down, too. Mm hmm. All depends on where they spot it. Uh, yep, nope, they're going to come up inches short. Down, yeah. yeah. So it looks like it's about four inches short of, of the first down. So I have an idea the Falcons will go for this one since it's not a huge gamble here. No, no. As a matter of fact, the center moved the ball, almost moved the ball past <laughs> when he picked it up. That's an old technique you used to teach. Yeah, yeah. I we tell you, Coach, that. that was a good defensive stand by yes, North. Was. That was a good surge there, but it's forward Mo. I think, Coach, is going to give him a first down from the spot of this side here. Well, they're lucky they only had about four inches to go because I think he only got about five. Yeah. And boy, a, a great surge there by Brent Klinkenberg, number 75, the big junior 275-pounder for the Wildcats. So, it, but anyhow, kind of reminds me of some of the quarterback sneaks uh, that your quarterback used to uh, <laughs> use when you when, he, when you were coached by. Or you I, think, you I coached beg him. your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's our Guello and a fine job there by Zach Sheedy of coming up and tripping him up. Well, we, you'll probably agree that the Wildcats have got to come up with some consistency on defense and uh, then yeah. hang on to the football. Quit well, making a big mistake. that's been their problem all uh, yeah all season, all, yeah, all season long. Even the the games uh, and the, that they were able to put points on the mm -hmm. board, uh, they'd still uh, you know let up 35, 40, 40 points in a game, and it's tough to win football games like that. We're going to see an equipment timeout, I believe, Coach. Yeah, I think we got a snap problem there, uh, Arguello's hat. And he's ready to go. Mack at the tailback now, and looks like uh, Weiss the up back for West. Mack right side, a sweep, and some gold shirts up awful quick there, but Mack will pick up five yards on the play. Uh, it appeared as though uh, Travis Veith was, Veith was there, number six, along with Simmons, along with uh, Josh Campbell, Campbell, number 44. Yeah. Yep. Campbell pretty active tonight. I yeah, tell he you, is flying around pretty good. He's, he's getting to the football really quick. Uh, he's having a little trouble wrapping. Right now he looks a little, looks like he needs a blow. I tell you, he's kind of, I don't know if he got a stinger or what, but mm -hmm. he uh, looks like he's, he's taking a knock or two. Arguello rolls to his left, got a man open at the 15, and that would be Kyle Jager, one of the co-captains for the about a 10-yard gain and a first down. Nice play. Well, that time I tell you, the linebackers came on the blitz. Uh, unfortunately, the man coverage wasn't very good. Mm -hmm. uh, got to tighten up a little bit when you're when you're coming on the blitz. Mm -hmm. 
especially when you're getting this close inside the 30 yard yeah. line. Yeah, we're, we're not a whole lot of real estate left here. No. Arguello, high formation. Here's the give on the cross buck and Corey Mack tripped up, but looked like it might have been Swain or Curtis Anderson. Campbell in there again? Yeah, Campbell to, for, to hold to about a yard gain, maybe a yard and a half. Kenan Christian back in the game now for the Wildcats as Travis Beath comes out. Too much time. And we got a delay of game, it appears. Against the West Falcons. So a bit of breathing room for the Wildcats <laughs> as the five as the five yard penalty is assessed. 823, 13-0 here in the second quarter. Second and 14. Crossbuck, the old crossbuck, split back crossbuck. Mac, a little room, a nice open field tackle by Eric McDonald, number 81 of the Wildcats. Well, good job by Mack to bounce it outside. Mm -hmm. uh, defensive mm -hmm. end on that side could not, uh, did not have its outside arm free, and uh, Mack just too quick, bouncing yeah. it to the outside and yeah. went around for, picked up a good gain here. So it'll be third in about 11. Four down territory again. I don't know if uh, Coach Flynn would accept a field goal at this point, maybe he would. Well, you know, they have that Robinson, big, tall receiver on the outside, mm -hmm. I tell you. Putting the ball up uh, in the corner would not be a bad job. In yes, fact, uh, they might have been trying to do that uh, on some type of play action, boot action. They had Robinson in the corner. In fact, they had two receivers in the corner, which was probably a mistake. But, right. Uh, right. I tell you, he's a big target down there. Down well, well, Arguello ran the boot there, lost a yard. Ryan Anderson, nice job flying around the field. He and uh, Josh Campbell both on the tackle. Yeah, West High is going to take a timeout at yeah. this point with uh, seven minutes and 18 seconds to go in the second period. Mm -hmm. And we'll take a break. That sounds good to me. Well, the Falcons will line up for a field goal attempt, and this would be about a 24, 34 yard kick. And the kick is long enough. Oh, no, it wasn't. I hit the crossbar. <laughs> long enough to hit the crossbar. <laughs> yeah, it was far enough to hit the crossbar. It really looked and like it was going to carry the crossbar, didn't it? Yeah. All right. Uh, so the 34-yard attempt is no good by Jake Anderson. And uh, Wildcats showed a little bit of defense that series, Coach. Yeah, hold and a little bit. that's what they need to do. So Chris Dilly would be happy about that set of series of downs. And now the Cats will take over in their own 20. From a pro eye set. Hubie on the look in. Nice catch by Sheedy. Ball thrown just a hair behind, but Sheedy will have all for a first down, I believe. Going to be awfully close. I think it is a first down, Coach. Yep, they're moving the Jackie markers. And like I say, good pass. Yes, it was. Good catch by Sheedy coming back a little bit for the ball. First and 10 on the Cats' own 31-yard line. Number 63, the right guard for the Wildcats, Shelton Rowe. We haven't mentioned him. Guys up front don't get a lot of mention. Here's the pitch play. And Simmons brought down for about a, looks like about a five yard loss there, maybe a three yard loss, four yard loss. Well, they ran the option that time, coach, and uh, West I West did. was ready for it. West was ready for it. Yep, uh, it covered well. Good job covering both the quarterback and the pitch man. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Hubie kind of came off, gave ground, uh, ran what we call the hump. And uh, tough to run the option when you're on the hump like that. Yeah. Come on, come on. 
And pressure, quick pressure again, Marcus Simmons. And look at this, coach. He may go all the way. Arguello, the last man to be able to make Better the dive. tackle, and I don't think it'll be done. Marcus Simmons, holy cow, 73-yard touchdown run by Marcus Simmons, and it's 13 to six, just like that. Well, the play started. West had a defender, they had him contained. They uh, did. They the play did. didn't look like it was going anywhere, and then Simmons just kind of freelancing. Uh, yeah, made it happen, and, well, and that's a great quality that Marcus Simmons has. You know, Mark Cole, number 64 of the Red Shirts, had a, had a, looked like he had Marcus by the jersey in the backfield, and uh, the strength of, of the running back just is tremendous. And we got ourselves a little newer ball game now. And the snap is high, and Callahan, the holder, will be nailed as the punt snap came back high. And, and Ryan Simmons uh, making the tackle for the Falcons. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, West Eye uh, doesn't execute on a, uh, an extra point, and uh, North Eye returns a compliment. Exactly right. 13 to 6 is your score with 5.59 to go here in the second quarter, and we'll take time out. We're back as Travis Veith tees it up. Ivis McNeil, uh, McNeil, deep middle receiver. Veith, good leg on the ball. McNeil bobbles it at the five yard line and finally picks it up. And a nice job, nice coverage by the Wildcat kickoff team. And I think that touchdown fired him up, coach. Well, it kind of doomed from the start there, Ivis was. Uh, he fumbled the ball, and then he got the ball kind of danced around, threw yep. off the timing of the return, yep. and uh, as a result, you got the Falcons starting uh, inside their own 10, pinned inside their own 10. So Sometimes that can be fairly scary, though, when a deep receiver bobbles the extra or the uh, kickoff back there, and all of a sudden their lane opens up, and he's got a 80 yards of nothing but green. At any rate, first and 10, Falcons. This is Mack right side, and he'll get to about the 15. Get into the cor corner fast, coach. They uh, are. West High. Yep, they are. Second and four for Mac West. the ball for six yards. Second down. <laughs> As Mack was running out of bounds on the far side. Seventy six Dan McCready for the Wildcats at the right defensive end and Mack off the left side for the first down up to the 20 yard line. And timeout will be called by Davenport North as Chris Dilley goes out and talks to his defensive squad and we'll take five. Five thirty one, first and ten. Should say five thirty one on the clock. Arguello back to throw and and a really good hit put on Arguello in the backfield by uh, Ryan Anderson, number 53, and Anderson's having himself a pretty good game, Coach. Well, that times they came after people. They they were stunting linebackers, mm -hmm. and they made some penetration and, mm -hmm. and, and got a sack, and uh, they probably need to do more of that, Coach. Yeah. And I think as uh, they see that being successful, we'll probably see some more of that. Second and 15. Uh-oh, here's Mack. Finally brought down at his own 28-yard line, and he got there pretty quickly, I might add. Well, he sure makes up for the, the yeah. loss. He yes, makes he... up everything they lost and, and then some, but uh, big play here for uh, North Eye defense. Yeah, it was. Curtis Anderson comes out as Andy Shackow comes in for the Wildcats at the left down inside tackle spot. 
And here is Mack, and he'll be short of the first down, Coach. We got a flag on the top side. Oh, I see that over yeah. there now. I didn't see the... Uh, that could very well be against West. Yeah. Well, the legal procedure. Yeah, they gave came up short. Uh, probably will decline. They're about well, a, what a yard maybe or a yeah, half yard. Yeah, a half yard from the first down marker. No guarantee that West would uh, yeah that, would punt it away. They're only about a half a yard down. Yep. But, uh, kind of a gutsy call. They've been and they did. Uh, Wildcats did decline the penalty. So. I don't think the West can take a chance here of not punting this football. We're going to see a timeout by West. Coach Flynn trying to signal a timeout. Coach I think they're going to talk about it at least. You know, this is an assistant coach timeout here because they want him to go for it. <laughs> and we'll take a timeout. Fourth and a half yard, and that will be a first down made. Easily, I believe, Coach, on the quarterback sneak. Looked like he made a well, yard and a half, maybe. Good call and a good decision by Coach Flynn. We were just talking yep. at the break. Uh -huh. uh, boy, when you make it, uh, <laughs> God, the fans think you're, you're a coaching genius. Yep. And, uh, yep, if you don't, you're just uh, All those assistants whatever. walk away from you uh -huh. and you try to get a little space between you and uh, Gee, the yeah, they're all made saying, oh, What we do that for? Anyway, so the Wildcats... Well, We'll look back at that oh. one and think twice on it. But here's Corey Mack and hit once hard, but keeps on going. Ken and Christian delivered a pretty good blow, but Mack picked up about five yards after that. Yeah, good play action mm -hmm. there. Kind of a dr uh, draw right off the uh, the boot action. Uh -huh. and, uh, good play for the Falcons. Second and three at the Falcon 38-yard line. And that could have been a missed handoff, could have been a quarterback keeper. Yeah, a quarterback follow almost. Yep. Uh, Might have been the keeper. It's third and one. Arguello takes it for one. Shaq Al and Klinkenberg back into the game as Swain and Anderson come out. Well, I get the impression that uh, the Falcons are uh, feeling pretty confident they can move the ball uh, uh -huh. on the Wildcats here. Uh. Well, that quick count quarterback sneak, Coach, I don't think they've gotten less than two yards out of that every time they run it. So first down at the 42 of the Falcons and on the move. 235 left here in the half at 13 to 6. Well, West High, West High. Yeah, West High has kind of dominated uh, offensively, but uh, we look at the score uh, the scoreboard is still only 13 to 6. Uh-huh. So, you know, the Wildcats are doing a good job hanging yeah, in there. Yeah, they are. Well, you know, the best defense against Marcus Simmons for the West High Falcons is to keep Marcus Simmons from off the offensive side of the football and they're not, they're controlling the football. Sure, game. I know time of possession. We don't yep. have it here, but you can you know, it's it, it's uh, in vast favor of uh, the Falcons. Indeed. 49 yard line of the Falcons, second and four. Arguello throws the fade and well defensed over there. Is that Sheedy, number two, I believe? No, Luke Fleming defending on the play. Sure, well, that was good defense that time. Yes, it uh, was. And I tell you, intended for Rob Robinson. That was the, uh, the we, we talked about it earlier, uh, the mismatch there. We, we thought we might see it earlier in the game down uh -huh. in the end zone, and uh, that would, also would be a good play to come back to for the Falcons. Mm -hmm. Get a little closer. Mack flips it to the outside uh -oh. and gets loose, oh. and <laughs> she or Fleming. Fleming. Fleming gets a hand on him and shoves him down. He was, he saw nothing but pay dirt. Oh, he was, he was. I think he had. Six he thought he was bag. gone. He had, a, he had a. He had. He had a quarter in the cash register, coach. <laughs> well, we are now under two minutes to go in the first half, and uh, 
you know, the Wildcats trying to hang on, you try bet. to keep the Falcons out of the end zone here for the remainder of the first half. Oh, good hit. Uh, nice defense there by Brett Goss, the 200 pound sophomore. Clock management starting to get more and more crucial here. Uh -huh. 135 and counting. Second and 11, a nice defensive play there by Brett Goss, the six foot sophomore of the Wildcats. I think the Falcons have at least one timeout left, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. Coach, don't they? This is McNeil to the left side and brought down by 22 Ryan Smith and 32 Kenan Christian. Well, North has not yet to really stop that toss. That toss play, West High keeps going to it. Uh, We're going to have to probably see the ball in the air here pretty quick. Coach. Yeah. We're under 40 seconds at yeah. this point. Third and two. Arguello rolls to throw. Got a receiver open at the 17 yard line. Pass complete to Kyle Jager. And Try to hurry up offense here. Yep. Change as the rules. The clock is going to start. The clock's going to go. Yeah. West doing a good job here, though, getting the offense to line up on the line of scrimmage. 33 seconds and running, and Arguello will down the football, second and 10, and that'll give the Falcons time to talk it over a little bit with Coach Flynn. And I'm sure they're going to put the ball up here, and they've got time to put the ball up at least three times, I'd say. Yeah. If, uh, if he doesn't run around too much anyway. Well, we're trying to get the information from our spotter as yep. to how many timeouts West Eye has here. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Statistics a little shaky. Yeah. <laughs> Mac, right side. He and and no, he, he got didn't out. make it out of bounds. Yeah. Mac takes it out of bounds for two yards. Second and eight coming up. Well, it was a good job by Mac to get out of bounds. Uh, that time they ran it to the, the toss to the short side of the field, and they just kind of ran out of real estate. Yep. Excuse me, third and eight coming up. Well, McNeil brings the play in from the sideline. They do have time to get, get at least one first down here, but uh, not too many more chances here. Here's the bootleg. Arguello. Intended for McNeil, but defended by Marcus Simmons, and I couldn't really tell if the ball was thrown in front or McNeil just didn't catch it. At any rate, it's an incomplete pass, and it's fourth and eight with 18 seconds to go, and Anderson, Vince Anderson, or excuse me, Jake Anderson comes in for the field goal attempt. Last time he kicked from about kicked it from about 40 34 wasn't it 34, 34 yards and he hit the crossbar so this one's a little closer about 32 yards yeah he'll go hey, this might well. make it and this one is short of the crossbar so the Wildcats got to feel good about stopping them again for no points on the board coach. Yeah, that was a good defensive effort here. Uh, Falcons sure was. Uh, yeah, got a little pressure there at the end. They were just kind of running out of time and, mm -hmm. and distance. And uh, but either way, the the Wildcats kind of dodge another bullet. And uh, 13 seconds to go in the half. Looks like we're probably going to go into the halftime with about a 13 to six score. West High over North High School here. Well, yeah, unless Simmons gets loose. Unless Simmons again. gets loose here, you think? Uh, <laughs> Wildcats in a split 80 yard draw here. play here. And uh, Falcons definitely in the goalie, goalie mode. Got a couple blocks to the outside. Five seconds on a clock. And I believe time, yeah, timeout is called by the Wildcats as Simmons runs the ball up to about the 39 yard line. Simmons takes it for 19 yards. 
We'll stay with it because this timeout won't take too long. They just want to stop the clock for one more play. Well, you want to catch Simmons at the line of scrimmage. Uh, he gets in that secondary, then all oh, oh yeah, that that's breaks scary. Loose. That is scary, is right. Well, the Falcons have got people spread all over the field defensively. They got their deep goalies back there, and then they got their secondary goalies, and then your, your people on the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Into their prevent defense, which yeah. uh, a lot of coaches <laughs> wonder really prevents what. <laughs> uh. Well, at least you got a lot of people back there to take some shots at Simmons if he breaks the line of scrimmage, which he did that time. So, so Coach Mark Bloom in the huddle. We'll see what they want to do. As Coach Gene Bells on the red shirt side of the field is talking to his defensive people and Coach Al Blocker, the D-back coach. Guy's been over West for a long time as assistant coaches. All right, last play of the half. Come on, Simmons. Oh, and he couldn't stay on his feet. At any rate, that'll bring us to the end of the first half, and we've all we've seen already how scary it is when Simmons gets the football. He has the opportunity to score, but the. West High Falcons will take a 13 to 6 lead in the locker room over the Davenport North Wildcats and we'll be back for the second half. Welcome back, everybody, to the second half of the Davenport West Falcons North High Wildcats football game. And we got some interesting statistics for you, Coach Manders. Marcus Simmons, 127 yards first half. And time of possession, 19 minutes to North, five minutes favor of West and West High has won, ran 51 plays to 17 plays for the Wildcats. So uh, that pretty statistically, much. they're kicking the Wildcats backside, but a great score and a great game. Yeah, the Wildcats continue to hang on yeah. and uh, yeah. Wildcats uh, have some big play potential with Marcus Simmons and uh, you know, this game is far from being over. Oh, and it'll be interesting to see how this second half comes. Yep. Uh, comes out here. I tell you, Arguello and uh, um, Mac, uh -huh. big first halves for West High. They uh, did. Seemed like they didn't do anything wrong. And uh, and we might add uh, part of that reason is a good offensive line play by uh, West High Falcons. That, that shows why uh, such a disparity in time of possession. All right, Hubie under center, first and 10 at the 35. Simmons brought down and ball was out, but uh, the ground caused a fumble, according to the referee, and it'll pick up about a two yards on the play. Well, we got a player with the shoe off. Shoe off uh, Brett no, we, Goss, uh, we can't have that. Putting his shoe back on. Now they need Brett in there, too, so. Sheedy coming to the sideline. Yep. Four sophomores starting for the Wildcats tonight. Hubie throws the fade pattern intended for Ryan Smith overthrown. Third and eight, Wildcats. Well, overall, a pretty good ball game we've seen in the first half. Players are playing hard, hitting hard. Tight ball game, 13 to six here in the third quarter. And you see a lot of that with uh, inner city rivals like this being played every year. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes uh, even, uh, you know, teams play their best against their, you know, their cross-down rivals. That's a fact. 
Here's Simmons and he snagged in the middle of the line a scrimmage there. For no gain. And that'll bring up a fourth down. And the Wildcats will have to punt it away. Well, we haven't seen uh, too many punts by the Wildcats, if any. I don't. This is true. Yeah, Tim Robinson handles the punting for uh, North High. Uh, we were watching him in pregame, mm -hmm. pre and he was uh, actually kicking some pretty, uh, pretty deep, high punts. But uh, that's been a long time ago. Left-footed kicker. Nope. When he dropped that ball, coach, the point goes down. He kicks the point. Much more deliberate in his practice, pregame practice. And consequently gets the gets a good roll gets out a good of it. Roll, yeah. The ball down to the 32 yard line of the Falcons. They'll take over first and ten, but we always used to tell our punters if they could drop the ball level, they can generally get a good kick out of it. But if the point of the ball goes down, then you kick the point and you don't get the good kick out of it. So I believe there's something to that. At any rate, first down. Falcons. Here's Mack over the left side and got some room down to the 39 yard line. Mm, Campbell, Josh Campbell on the tackle. Uh huh. But uh, Mack looks like he's going to start where he finished uh, the first half there. Uh, having a good night tonight, Corey Mack. Yes, he is. He looks good. Second and three. You know, we mentioned Marcus Simmons, 172 yards at the half. Uh, 127. 127, yeah. excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Still uh, impressive, though. Yes. Needs, what, 253 yards to break Tavian Banks' uh, record. Yeah. All Mac. Uh, yeah. And looks like if he stays healthy, he's on his way to, to breaking he that record. Well if break not that. tonight, uh, mm -hmm. next week versus Pleasant Valley. Corey Mack carries for four yards and the first down. First down, Falcons at the Falcon 43-yard line. <clears throat> Play comes into the huddle from Rob Robinson. And a full blitz on by the uh, Wildcats. And they put a lot of pressure on Arguello. He did have a receiver open. Pass intended for for Corey Mack. Uh, Corey Mack. That was a full eight-man rush there, Coach. Well, I like the aggressive play by the Wildcats. Yeah. Uh, you know, yep. I thought in the first half we talked uh, you know, the fact that maybe they they stay, stood back and played their base defense mm -hmm. a little too much, and uh, this time putting heat on Arguella, flushing him from the pocket. Arguella really didn't have any time to really get his feet set underneath him and hit that open receiver. Right. Well, you got a. Pat Chris Dilly and Matt Verdon on the back a little bit here. As Mack goes around the right side and picks up some pretty good yards. Well, the toss sweep worked uh, extensively mm -hmm. in the uh, the first half here. Uh, North High has yet to shut that play down, yep. and, and West should just keep coming back to it again and again and again because North is yet to stop it. Uh -huh. we've, we've talked about their problem in containment, and they haven't cleaned it up yet. I like the toss sweep play because it gets the ball to the outside awfully quick. And then if you got some people with some feet, hey, <laughs> you better have some contain out there. West High in the wing formation, Mac right side, and he'll pick up about four more before he's brought down by a bunch of Wildcats over there, led by uh, Kenan, by Ryan Smith, number 22, excuse me, and Kenan Christian, 32. Travis Beath, number six, also over there. Second and six. From the Wildcat 36-yard line. And I believe the Wildcats will pick up a quick five yards here. In the direction they want to go. So the Illegal procedure, procedure West. penalty assessed Five against West. Second, down. second and 11. A little inside trap to Weiss, I believe it is, number 35. 
and he'll pick up about five of what carry for five. Third down and about seven. Number 63 for the Falcons, Chris Johnson. One of the offensive linemen. Mac left side on the lead play and got some room and he just keeps his feet going coach and he picks up pretty 10 pretty quick yards. Yeah, it, I tell you North or West High once again kind of showing their dominance here uh -huh. on the uh, offensive line. I was kind of watching the linebackers for North High and they were going backwards coach. <laughs> Not a good, not not good play if you want to stop that that lead. No, not the direction you want to go. Mac, right side and Josh, Josh Campbell. Josh Campbell on the spot for a nice tackle. Yeah, I got Josh. a little bit of help there from Brett Goss. But Josh having a good game tonight. I mm -hmm. tell you, he's been pretty active yeah, the whole he's night. He's flying around. Corey Mack is little guy, but he gets Josh. the mm -hmm. ball. Uh, gets the ball real quick. So second and 13 for the Falcons at the Wildcat 28 yard line. 6.30 on the clock and moving 13 to six here in the third quarter at Brady Street Field. Mack right side and Kenan Christian was all over him. Didn't make the play though. Coach didn't put the wrap on him. But uh, held him up long enough for everybody else to get there. Yeah, I think he's going to come up short of the first down, though. Mm -hmm. uh, third and 11. You know, I think the way the kicking scheme uh, gone for West High, too. I think Coach Flynn's got two downs here to make uh, one yard. Yeah. I don't think well, it's, no, it's third and 11, is it not? Yeah, or third and 11. Yeah, I'm third looking at 11. Chain. Yep. My fault, Coach. Sorry. No problem. Arguella rolls to pass and got a hand on it. Yeah, Kenny yeah. Christian tipped the ball. Trying to hit so, Weiss out there as the, uh -huh. in the underneath uh -huh. underneath pattern, and this time Christian just uh, dropping him from his linebacker spot and got a hand on it. Now a crucial fourth down play here for the for the Wildcat defense. You got a fourth and 11, and you cannot allow this first down right here. So we'll see what both teams come up with. Wing formation, double tights for the Falcons. Arguella rolls. And pressure putting on, and a nice, nice catch. catch made at the 12-yard line by Kyle Jager. And this is just what we talked about, Coach. Allowed the first down of fourth and 11. Yeah, that'll kill you. Arguella that time uh, really doing a doing a good job uh, sprinting to his left and threading the needle. He actually uh, put that ball between two North High defenders. Uh huh. And it was a good good pass and a good catch by uh, by Kyle Jagger. And that's going to break the Wildcats back here. Yeah, that's that takes a steam right out of you. And they had played good defense. At any rate, Mack around the left side and uh, good defense here. As no gain on the play, second and 10. Falcons can make another first down here if they advance the ball down to the two yard line. Man, I like this carpet. You can tell where the football is. In the old days of the chalk. Oh, Mack over the right side is mm -hmm. going to pick up some yardage, and Campbell was flew right it, by and missed the play. Coach. Yeah, we've seen Josh in the backfield yep. several times tonight, and that time he just could not get, yep, get just, Mack wrapped up. He flew through there, not in control, but he, I'll tell you what, he was flying. 
So third and four at the six yard line. Arguello rolls. Got some pressure and good no, defense back off. there. By, by number 22, Ryan Smith for the Wildcats. I'll tell you, Smith had a good chance to get an interception there. Mm -hmm. uh, he had his hands on the ball, just could not hang on to it. Yep. So fourth and about five here for the Falcons, and they're going to go for it, looks like. Nope, looks like nope. Oh, Anderson's in with the T. Well, Anderson's Anderson. come close twice. Yes, he has. Uh, this one's a little easier about a, uh, oh, what amounts to about a 23-yard field goal. Yep. And it looks good, and it is good. So the Falcons will put up a 23-yard field goal by Jake Anderson and making the score 16-6 to with 4-12 left here in the third period, and we'll take a break. For the man's offense to place in order, we need your support. Thank you. We're back at Brady Street Stadium where the West High Falcons have taken a 16-6 lead over the Wildcats and a crucial 4th and 11 play that the Falcons picked up a minute minutes ago resulted in three points on the board. And here's a short kick picked up by Tim Robinson and he'll be buried at about the 38-yard line. First down on the first down north on their own 39 yard line. I got to quit coordinating with the public address man here. <laughs> the West High student body over there working the PA. Yeah. All right, Hubie under center. Fakes the hand off to Simmons and throws long. Attempted for Terrence Callahan, but the ball was out of bounds all the way. The pass intended for Callahan is incomplete. So second and ten. Second down. Hubie, Simmons, left side. And a nice tackle on the left side by number 63, Third down. Chris Johnson. Mm, and that time, coach, nine senior. people in the box for, uh, for yep. West High that time. Yep. I mean, man and up on the, uh, the outside receivers and everybody else within uh, three yards of the ball or three yards of the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. That, and that's fine, I tell you, if you catch Simmons at the line of scrimmage, but boy, if he pops through there, boy, it's, yep. it's, it's Katie by it's, the door. He's going to be gone. Nice pop pass, nice catch by Tim Robinson. But I'll tell you what, Corey Mack put a pop on him after he caught it. Yeah, we could, hear that. we could hear it up here. Right in the chest, bang. But nice job by Robinson hanging on the ball, and Hubie, Hubie looks good on a little play, that little jump pass play there. So first down at the Falcon 45 yard line. Single setback now for the Wildcats to Simmons and Corey Mack comes through and makes a play. Mac, kind of a stalwart on both sides of the football, Coach. Well, yeah, both these teams have a lot of kids going both ways. Mm -hmm. It's not like the old days where, uh, you know, teams have, uh, you know, 50 mm -hmm. to 80 kids on, mm -hmm. on a squad. Uh, most teams now averaging about anywhere from 30 to 40-some kids. And your better athletes are going to go both ways. Yep. Second and uh, 13, Hubie on the look-in, and... Ball thrown to Callahan, and the receivers, Wildcat receivers are taking a ripping out there. Well, Larson came up and uh, gave him a little pop after the ball was kind of went by the wayside. Mm -hmm. yeah. So 
So third and 13 for the Cats. And pass intended on the far side for Number 22, Ryan Smith, and uh, got a West High player down now. Uh, yeah. In fact, it's Aguelo over there. Right? Is it? Yeah. A little contact between uh, Smith or Aguelo there. I don't know if yeah, they got, they their got feet kind of uh, when the ball got there, they kind of got uh, hung up, didn't they? Yeah. Well, some of the North High fans thought it would be interference, but uh, yeah. the referee ruled it as incidental. Yeah. But Arguello uh, down right now could be a cramp. Yep. Well, we'll take a break and come back and check that out. Down for well, Ryan Arguello shaking up on the last play, walking gingerly to the sideline, and we hope he's okay. Bring up a punting situation for the Cats as uh, pick. they fake the punt, and Marcus Robinson pick it up. goes, to, or uh, Marcus Simmons, excuse me, to the outside, and he'll pick up a first down. Nice play from by the Wildcats on the fake punt. Big punt looks a little more exciting, uh, a little more effective when you got a Drake Relays champion sprinter there. Uh, yeah, as the yeah, upback. Uh, it does. <laughs> I don't, I, coach, I don't know if you were that smart yeah. a coach to ever uh, put somebody like that yep. in that position. Yeah, it's just another 40-yard uh, sprint for him. Yeah. At any rate, a nice play by the Wildcats. Kind of caught the Falcons a little off guard. Simmons scoots around the left side and makes the first down. First down, Wildcats. And Simmons might have paid for it right there because number 79, Luke Thiessen of the Falcons, was met him head on. And I tell you, he gave him a pop. Uh, you yep. could hear the pads clicking up here. Thiessen, the 250-pound center and defensive tackle. Defensive tackle for a loss of three. Second down. <laughs> Huby back to throw, wide open on the far side, and a flag on the play as a completed to it's a completed to Ryan Smith on the far side, and that's going to be a hold. Yeah, well, it's too bad I tell you because Smith ran a really nice uh, out pattern there, and and Huby delivered the ball right on schedule. He yeah, did. That was a crisp pass. That's a great timing play, and it was wide open. You know, you know. Speaking of pass plays, you know what we haven't seen so far tonight is any type of swing pass or screen pass to Simmons uh -uh. Uh -uh. at this point. And uh, you know, we don't know if that's in the game plan for tonight, but yeah. we've yet to see it. And uh, that may be a good play. Uh, another way you can get uh, your star athlete uh, the football. Yeah, you got to have several ways to get the ball to your star, don't you? All right. At any rate, second and about 20. And Callahan so on, the, on the look in, the ball's thrown behind him. Third and, and 21. Third down. Third and 21 for the Wildcats. Single set back for uh, the Wildcats. And there's the swing to Simmons that we've been talking about, Coach. And nicely defended over there by number 63, was it? Chris Johnson? Yeah. Well, they sniffed it out that time. Uh -huh. uh, so fourth and 20. And again, I think it's kind of early. You know, the whole quarter to go here, kind of early to go for this, but that's my opinion. Well, they got pretty decent field position, although you, you kind of question as to whether, you know, if we punt now, we could possibly pin West Eye deep in uh, mm -hmm. inside their own 10. Mm -hmm. But uh, fourth and about 20, uh, not a high percentage down here. 
QB delivers Ooh. and he had Smith deep. Yep. Smith was open for the first down, but QB couldn't get the ball there. Did a good job of scrambling around back there, and the Falcons will take over on downs at their own 40 yard line, and that's what I'm talking ball about that field position right there. Yeah, it could have probably cost you at least 20 yards mm -hmm. because if you punt and the ball goes in the end zone, uh, you gain at least 20 yards. And, of course, if you kick it inside, if you're down inside the end zone, anything yeah. like that is even, even a better gain. But, uh, you That's know. history, isn't it? Yeah. First down, Falcons. 31 seconds here to go in, this, in the uh, third quarter. And ball given to Weiss yeah. over the left side, and he'll well, pick up five. Uh, now Larson is uh, in at quarterback. We saw Arguello uh, go out with an injury uh, the last series, and he is not back yet. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if kind of the play selection, the, uh, the offense uh, still keeps its momentum with a new quarterback here yeah. for West High. Larson, a little, little, uh, little smaller uh, than Arguello. Uh, you're uh, you're uh, less experience. Mm -hmm. And that'll do it for the third quarter here at Brady Street. So West holds on to a 16 to six lead here at the end of the third quarter and we'll be back. And we're back in action here, fourth quarter action at Brady Street. And here's the give to Weiss, and he bowls his way across the 50 for the first down at the Wildcat 48-yard line. And the PA here tonight is really loud, Coach Manders. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, some young kids from West High Student Senate uh, running it. Uh, <laughs> the regular PA man. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, deals with student center and probably helping out with senior night. First and 10. Weiss left side. And Weiss is a strong runner. Another five yard gain for him. Checking out his size. He's six Jeff foot, Weiss, 185 and five runs hard. Second, down. Second and five. Weiss again on the same play, might get one this time. Nice job by the Wildcat right side of the line. Weiss on a two yard gain, third down. Third and about four. And Campbell. Faked the hand, I think, you know, I think he was faking the handoff and going to maybe run that to the outside, but uh, he lost the handle on the ball, as you mm -hmm. said, and now it's fourth and uh, seven, West right on the 45-yard line. For two yards off. Down. So West will punt. Tom Pepper's back in punt formation, back deep for the. Wildcats, Marcus Simmons. And Simmons will feel the ball at the 10. Got a little room to the outside. And good punt coverage by the Falcons. Simmons brought down at the 20. First down, Wildcats. Well, 
our, you know, with West High offense uh, losing our goal, it looked like they hurt a little bit. They give them a, a kind of a more explosive weapon at mm -hmm. quarterback, uh, mm -hmm. and they've, they've lost that a little bit. And North came up with a pretty decent stop. Hubie under center. Simmons right side bounces off a tackler, but finally snatched up by Seth Farley, number 22. Farley, a sure tackler out there for the Falcons. Yeah, West is just bringing Mack up the line of scrimmage, and he's blowing a gap. Yep. And that time, Mack got him in collision. Uh, Simmons in the backfield and bounced right off him. Yep. But uh, Mack's been in the backfield here the last two series is quite a bit. Second and 12. Simmons right side on the sweep. And he gets up to about the 27 yard line, a pickup of about 10. Well, again, the Falcons have pretty much dominated the game time wise and play wise. But North keeps hanging but around. But North is hanging in there, hanging and uh, you know it's important this there's point. Time, yeah, there's time for him to win this ball game. Well, plenty of time left to, to go in this fourth quarter with about eight minutes and uh, 38 seconds to go in the game. Mm -hmm. And West High has to play good defense here, or they'll uh, they'll find themselves in a difficult situation. Yep, he'll uh, be on the keeper. And Hubie will lose about five on the play. Fourth and about seven. So Robinson in the, for the punt. Hubie carries for no gain. Fourth down. There's the punts we've seen in pregame, coach. That point of that ball coming down didn't get the carry out of it that we've seen, but uh, tough ball to handle and it's down by the Wildcats at about the 45-yard line. Great field position for the Wildcat or for the uh, Falcons. Excuse me. Well, it looks like Arguello is going to come back, and he's kind of limping a little bit. Uh, we saw him uh, look like his ankle was being taped on the far side, and yep. he's coming in with a little limp, but he's going to try a. Uh, he's limping. Give a it lot, a try here. Anyway, Arguello under center. Here's a give to Mack, and Mack will rip about five quick yards off. Mack is five yard carry, second down. Second and five. Well, the Falcons will try to control the ball like they've done all night long. Eat the clock up. They're content with five yards a lick, as well, I would be, I think. Well, they got a great opportunity here. I yep. think Coach Flynn figured if you can get one more in the in the barn here, uh, that could pretty much uh, spell doom for the Wildcats. Yeah. Well, we'll have a five-yard penalty here assessed against the Falcons, I think, for a procedure. Not the kind of penalty you want at this point in the ball game when you when you want to eat clock up. Five yard penalty. Repeat, second down. Second ten. The old cross buck pass play and wide open down the middle. And was Rick Schaefer, and Schaefer dropped the ball, coach. He just dropped a touchdown, And coach. is he going to be growly at himself this week? The pass intended for Rick Schaefer is incomplete. The old crossbuck bomb, huh? Well, he just dropped the golden package, coach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's... <laughs> You don't know when the golden package is coming, but yep. <laughs> when it comes, you better catch it. That's one of those. Because you might not see it in just go back. the rest of the year. <laughs> go back to the bench and kind of, <laughs> yeah. kind of leave your hat 
buckle up and everything. I don't think no one talks to you when you yeah. do that. Uh, Arguello gives to Mac on a little counter, on the counter, uh, kind of that. He's awfully close to the first down. Yep. Kind of that counter draw play we saw a while ago. And he's Fourth. getting up slow too. He's a little shaken up on the play. Yep. Yeah, I think he's going to be leaving. Fourth and mm -hmm. one. Yeah, Mac is, uh, he's going to limp to the sideline here, Coach. He doesn't look too healthy. That should probably put McNeil back at the eye back situation. Well, Kyle Jager comes in, number 83, with the play. So Ivis McNeil will be at the tailback spot. And we might have too and much time. That'll be a delay a game. So the Falcons with a little series of mistakes here. You never know when those little things are going to prove costly. Well, a little problem with the injury to McNeil coming out late, yeah. and then uh, yeah. and then the play got in kind of slow. And but that's kind of a crucial mistake when you're you're chasing fourth and short, and now you're you're looking at a fourth and six. Yep. And it brings in as a result changes the whole strategy. They're going to go back and punt. Well, Peppers to punt. And that was close to being blocked. Simmons will let it up. Simmons will field the ball. That was a little bit of a dangerous move, but I think he felt that that ball was going to be down to inside the five yard line. So I think he tried to field it and get it out of there. Well, I tell you, if North is going to do something, now is the time they got to do it. Yeah, they have a long way to go. Got to go about 94 mm -hmm. yards, but uh, we have about five, almost six minutes to go in the game, 5.43 to go in the game, and North is really uh, two scores down. Uh, yeah. They're going to have to at least get uh, one touchdown and one field goal if they expect to win this game. And so now's the time they got to react. High formation. Ball goes to the fullback. Ryan Goss. West West has two key players. There are two key players out of the game. Both Mac and Arguello uh, are limping tonight. They're no longer playing defense. Uh huh. And that might be a little help for North High. See if they can get something going. And when in for West High, we have to have some reserves uh, step up to the, meet the challenge. Correct again. Simmons right side got some room and Good look bye. out. Look out, he's got one man to beat, and I'll bet this man is going to get beat, and Simmons is going to go, Coach, 95 yards for the touch. And I don't see any flags. So there's, there's the scary thing about Marcus Simmons. All of a sudden, he's at the other end of the field, yeah. and it's 16 to 12. Well, with two key kids up for West High, you know, that's, that's going right. to hurt. They, there's four minutes and 52 seconds left on the clock here. Now is uh, Coach Mark Bloom elect to go for the – go for two here? Well, if he gets if – he, if he kicks the extra point, he's down by three. If he goes for two and gets it, he'll be down by two. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure they're going to discuss it right now. And what a beautiful run by Marcus Simmons. That puts him probably around 250 yards for the night, on the night. So he doesn't have to have too many yards to break that record of Tavian Banks. But again, uh, well, I think he, I think he traded for a win week. right now, Coach. Pardon me? I think he traded for a, team, a win, knowing Marcus. Yeah, I know he would. So the Falcons are going to have to buckle it on here for the next almost five minutes but as we got a timeout on the field we'll take a timeout well we're back as the Wildcats line up to go for two at 16 to 12 Simmons around the right side and won't get it in so it's remains 16 to 12 it's no good at this point, Coach, I'm not sure that makes any difference because the Wildcats got to get the ball back and they got to get yeah. the ball to Simmons again anyhow. So, well, they're going to have to make another defensive yeah. stop. Yep. And uh, 
for the Falcons, I'm going to tell you, their two seniors, Arguello and uh, Mac, they're going to have to rise to the occasion and shake off these injuries. Oh, you bet. You uh, bet. Well, 16 to 12, 4.52 to go, and uh, we'll take this opportunity to uh, thank uh, Mr. Gary Long, the West High School AD, for allowing us in the press box tonight to uh, do the game for AT&T Cable Services and Family Ties Production. We've enjoyed doing the games all year, and the season is quickly drawing down as, as this game is on. This is the final week of the regular season as the playoff teams are starting to develop. Uh, obviously, Assumption, Bettendorf are both in, I'm, I would say, with a chance for uh, Pleasant Valley, maybe North Scott. So we're probably looking for an onside here, would you say? Yeah, Although Coach Travis Will. Keith has demonstrated that he can kick the ball pretty deep. He can kick the ball deep. Well, there's two ways philosophies you can go. You can kick the ball deep and expect uh, your defense to hold yeah. and get the ball yeah. back with decent field position, or you can uh, you can go for the onside kick right now. Now Arguello is back deep to receive, and he cannot run, Coach. He is his ankle is bothering him. I'm, let's see what we have. We see what we got here. Falcons lined up in an onside receiving team, and there's the onside kick, and the ball is comes up nicely into the hands of Ryan Sims, a sure-handed sure receiver on the far side. I don't think Travis got the kick he was looking for there. He didn't get that slow one hopper, you know what I mean? So the defense is gonna have to make, make things happen here. Got just a hair a bit too much football in there, didn't he? On the foot. Mm. And is this Mac back in the game now? Mm. Yep. Carrying the ball for about an eight-yard gain. Well, you don't think this game means a, a lot to these kids. I tell you, they come off the bench and yes, uh, right. play with injury right now. You're exactly right. And that, that's pretty commendable of these kids to hobble off a field and come back in and Weiss and Weiss has been a horse tonight coach he doesn't mm -hmm. have too many yards but yeah but they I need five he comes up with you're it. right he's been just doing a quiet steady job and every mm -hmm. so often running the inside trap and the cross bucks uh, uh, for for success Four oh five on the clock, sixteen to twelve Falcons. And Josh, Josh Campbell, Campbell wrapped all around uh, Corey Mack. For no Corey Mack. Second down. I have an idea Josh Campbell's played the game of his career tonight. The way he's fired around the field. Dan McCready coming off the field. Second and 10. Mac wrapped up after about a four yard gain. North High going to take one of their first times yep. out. They're going to have to stop the clock here, I think. 3-11. The ball for four yards. Timeout Wildcats. Timeout North. And we'll take timeout. 3rd and about five for the Falcons. And the toss. Mack to the right side and got Goodbye. all day to run. Touchdown, Falcons. And, oh boy, now we're seeing something ugly. And we're gonna have a brawl on the field here. Unbelievable. Unbelievable.
Why don't we take time out Good. here? This is unbelievable. Well, after some uh, on the field shenanigans, we're back for the extra point. And the extra point attempt by West is no good. But they'll maintain a 22 to 12 lead with three minutes and four seconds left to go. And uh, what we saw was not the uh, yeah the best uh, highlight for uh, high school football. Yeah, not what we want to see in high school football. And uh, West penal was penalized there on the extra point uh, for unsportsmanlike conduct. And and we might add that uh, one player for West High did yep. uh, get ejected from the game. So. And, uh, you hate to see stuff be, like that. Yeah, then that young man was done for the rest of his high school career. Mm -hmm. So, at any rate, we won't talk any more about that. We're not going to justify it. It's unbelievable what we saw, and uh, that's enough said. So, Simmons will be back deep for the Wildcats. as uh, alongside Ryan Smith and they'll won't come apart back there probably until the ball is kicked by Jake Anderson number 71 The ball was number 34 for the Wildcats, Ryan Goss, and Goss is piled on to, and they'll get another 15 yard penalty, I believe, against the Falcons. Things just getting a little tad bit sloppy here in the closing yeah, minutes. And that was that was not a real late hit there, I didn't think. So but the referees are gonna keep this game now for the next three minutes as tight as they can keep it because of the incident we've had here tonight. So first down Wildcats at the at their own 36 yard line. And as we discuss the what we do at this point as Wildcat coaches, but we probably uh, Marcus Simmons right, Marcus Simmons left, wouldn't you say coach? <laughs> yeah, not not all that bad uh, options there. Mm-hmm. QB under center, 2.57 to go. Here's Simmons left. Here's my first call I made right. Oh, and it has to be pushed out of bounds at right at midfield. Simmons picked up 14 yards. So first down. First down north at the midfield. And now we look for Simmons Wright. Right. <laughs> and pass thrown to Terrence Callahan on the far side down to about the 40 yard line and that'll be about a yard shy of the first down. Clock on the move with 235. Important West High doesn't give that much cushion at this mm -hmm. point. You know, they're still in the game. Uh, they're still coming with about seven people. Simmons right side, first down at the Falcon 36 yard line. I don't have any doubt about the Wildcats scoring again. It's whether or not they can recover the recover onside, the onside kick. kick yeah. you, didn't you feel that way about it? Well, West has been, you know, has not played bad defensively. Part yeah. of it is uh, their defensive end has had to spend all that much time on the field because uh -huh. the West High offense has dominated uh, quite extensively this game. But uh, I tell you, with Simmons in, in the backfield, uh, you got big play potential, and, and it's not over till uh, the final gun. That's true. Well, pass thrown by Hubie, incomplete second and ten. Second down. Play comes in with Ryan Smith. 
see what Coach Bloom has in store here as we recognize coaches Matt Verdon, Chris Dilley, sophomore head coach Ken Call, and assistant Eldon Bird. Simmons got some room, tackled at the 22 yard line with 156 on the clock. And the clock will not start until the chains are set. Wildcats in a no huddle. As the clock restarts. And intended for Ryan Smith, incomplete. Not too bad a ball there. It kind of hung there, mm -hmm. but uh, Smith needed to go up and get it. Ryan Larson on the coverage and uh, is incomplete. Second down. Second and ten for the Cats at the Falcon 23 yard line. Simmons. Nice job by number 79. Luke Thiessen of tackling Simmons. Simmons loses two on that carry. Third down and 12. Third and 12. Ooh. Callahan open on the far side, but uh, Hubie That's unable to uh, deliver. Now we got fourth and fourth and twelve, Coach. With 113 left on the clock. Well, Coach, I think they got to put the ball in the best uh, their best uh, ball player's hand at well, this point. Hubie back to throw. Got some room. The one thing he couldn't do is run out of bounds without getting the first down. He had to throw it up for grabs or something yep. here. But at any rate, it got exciting there for a little bit. Yeah, a, a mighty effort by the Wildcats and a fine job by the to the, by the Falcons to hang on to to get this game. And there is one minute and five to go, so you never know. Yeah, but uh, the last two or three minutes have been kind of exciting here with uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. the touchdown and the, some First of the fiascos way. that occurred afterwards. So Arguello will be content to take a knee and just get the clock going. Not keeping track of timeouts. We don't know. Wildcats must not have any left, or they'd probably be using them, but. Well, Bob, they'll need to snap the ball at least one more time here, Coach. Well, we saw a pretty competitive football game, Coach. It yeah, was, we really uh, did. It was a close game. Yep. Um, Two teams with not very good records went at, went at each other hard and uh, played for some the pride of the victory and uh, some city bragging rights. Yeah, yeah. So the Davenport West Falcons will take away a victory here at Brady Street tonight from the North High Wildcats by a score of 22 to 12. Proves their record to uh, three and five, where three North and, drops yep, to right. uh, 0 and eight, three and five, and uh, Wildcats remain winless, and uh, they'll have a chance this week at uh, Pleasant Valley, I believe, and uh, have a safe and enjoyable ride home. Davenport West, I believe, and I don't have my schedule in front of me, so I can't tell you who they have next week, but at any rate, Thanks for being with us tonight. AT&T Cable Services and Family Ties Production. Uh, I'm Cy Robinson, uh, along with Jeff Manders and Jess Medina. We brought you this football game, and hope you'll join us next week.